Hi, this is Dr. Marianne Ross from ShiftYourLife.com with Dr. Gerald Pollack and Dr. Tracy Latz. Tracy? We are so thrilled to have tracked you down, Dr. Pollack. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is your I'm conference. I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> yeah. oh, uh, we love the concepts that you put forth in your fourth phase of Water Book, and we understand that you're taking that a bit further. What would you like the world to know about water and, and where you're looking at now? Well, uh, there are a few things. Uh, the, the first is that you know, all of us presume that water has three phases, uh, the solid, liquid, and vapor, uh, but we found a fourth phase, and that's the reason for the name of that book, The Fourth Phase of Water. And the fourth phase is, is, is something in between, uh, between a solid and a, and a liquid, and it has really interesting properties. It, it has a negative charge. It's not neutral like H2O. And next to this water is a complementary opposite charge, positive charge. And so the negative charge of the EZ and the positive charge of the uh, region beyond gives you a battery. And that battery is actually powered by sunlight. See, so, so it's a very interesting phase of water. And, you know, most people's first thought is, so what? <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> why you know, should we care about this as humans? Why should we care about it? And the reason you should care about it is that your cells are packed with this kind of water. Uh, most of the water that's inside your cells is actually fourth phase water, not H2O. So, so you should care about it quite a lot because you should, be, you should be terribly interested in the properties of this water. You need this water in order to function. Without this water, you're dead. And, and the more of this water that you have inside of your cells, the more, uh, shall we say, normal uh, is, is your function. So we found that uh, various pathologies um, seem to be deficient. Uh, the cells seem to be deficient uh, with a, from this kind of, of water. And there are many ways to build up this water. Uh, I've discussed this at various conferences and such. This water has negative charge, and so if you can build negative charge in your body, then you're going to be able to, to build up this kind of water. So one of the usual ways is through earthing or grounding. You know, you, you walk on the sand, right? Yes. Barefoot, and, and you feel good after you do that. And the question is, well, why do you feel good? And I think the reason you feel good is that the earth is full of negative charge. Most, most people don't understand this, or don't realize this. I studied in my uh, undergraduate days electrical engineering. If somebody told me that the earth had a net negative charge, I'd tell them that it must be on some kind of drug. <laughs> and I, I just simply couldn't believe it. And when I found out uh, that the earth is negatively charged, I, I, I was flabbergasted. I couldn't believe it. But I read that in a, a chapter in the, the famous uh, lectures by Richard Feynman, he discusses this. Uh, volume 2, Chapter 9 is all about the negative charge of the earth. And up until that time, until say 1950s or so, everybody knew that the earth was negatively charged. And my friend who first told me was a Russian of contemporary age. And when I told him that, he can't be right about this negative charge. He said, well, what do you mean we can't be right? Even in middle school, in my education, every middle school student in Moscow knew that the Earth had a net negative charge. Well, we've totally forgotten about negative charge. So, so back, back to the theme, you, you walk barefoot on the beach, and what you do is you soak up negative charge. You need that negative charge to build the easy water. And so, so if you have a problem, like your muscles are aching, and aching muscles usually means not enough easy fourth phase uh, water. And you walk on the beach or, or, and, and you soak up this negative charge and, and you feel better. A another one is uh, in the sauna. So we found that light, especially infrared light, uh, is responsible for, for building this kind of water. And so we all have the experience, or most of us have the experience, of sitting in a, in a sauna. And, uh, and after 20 or 30 minutes, we come out and we feel so refreshed and so wonderful. And the question is, well, why do we feel so good? And I, I think it's, it's, it's less a psychological kind of uh, uh, phenomenon and more actually a physical phenomenon. In the lab, we found that uh, in the presence of 
of infrared heat, if you will, yes. infrared energy, this water builds up. It's a powerful effect. You just need a little bit of infrared and you get a, a wildly, uh, a, a, a tremendously increased uh, amount of easy water. So if you build the easy water, if your cells, your body is exposed to, to this kind of radiant energy, it builds the easy water. And the easy water buildup improves function. And so if you've got a headache, then you have no headache afterward. If you've got sore muscles, you have no sore yes. muscles afterward, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I give I give these uh, two as as two of actually a whole bunch of uh, different examples of, of how you can heal yourself uh, uh, with, with very very simple ways. Uh, so. <laughs> what about through drinking water? Yeah, because good question. Because we all, we often drink water and we're still dehydrated. Yeah. So uh, this is a subject that needs a further study. We have some indirect evidence that if you drink this fourth phase of water, it will increase the amount of fourth phase or easy water in your cells. See, so, so therefore, you'd expect that certain kinds of water would, 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 would rehydrate your cells better than other types. Um, we'd like to do some studies on this, mm -hmm. but to do them properly uh, requires a few million dollars right. and, and you know the National Institutes of Health is the, the interest in studying the role of water in health is is close to zero as you can imagine well maybe a major water company like like Nestle might be interested in, in funding oh, something I, like it, it would be great if they are however you know if you're if the research is done under the sponsorship of a particular company there's a danger that the absolutely results, yeah. right. what, what I hoped was that 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 the different water companies would form some kind of consortium that would get some money together and fund this kind of research. Whether we do it or somebody else does it, it I, you know, we know a lot about water, so I think we can do a proper job and we have biological background too. It needs to be done by a group that's Absolutely. independent. Absolutely, an any independent group. Independent group, otherwise it's simply difficult right. to believe any results. But I know there are some waters out there that um, the are tremendously powerful. So in, in the meeting that it has just ended right now, often people come to the meeting who have various kinds of water and, yes. and, and they say, our water is great, it does this, it does that, but of course you, you never really know whether. And how long does the water stay that way? Once how long does it stay that way? And sure. how long does it take to get into so. the system and what part of the system does it hydrate? You yeah, all of those questions, questions right? you know, they're so basic and so important mm -hmm. and they need desperately to be answered. I can't tell you how many emails and phone calls I get <laughs> per week saying, which water should I drink? Or is this water good or is this water bad? And uh, I can't really say, I can, I can speculate. There are some that I, uh, where the evidence is, is pretty clear. Uh, for example, uh, one, one fellow um, contacted me a few years ago to tell me that uh, They've been working on a kind of water, and they've been drinking it, and they, they mm -hmm. no longer get the flu, anything mm -hmm. like that. And next door neighbor, next door neighbor, found out about that. Had a friend who was on dial dialysis and was on the kidney transplant mm -hmm. list, and you know the friend said, "Can I connect you two people?" So the woman started to drink the water, and the first phone call from this guy, he said, "She she drank the water for 30, 30 days." and the, her irreversible kidney pathology was reversed. I said, I don't believe you, <laughs> but actually I did. So he sent me the hospital records. And by the time he came to our water conference, uh, there were already multiple patients. And so a, a colleague of mine wanted to go into, into business uh, with him and, and they met together and he telephoned me and, 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 and said, this is really true. He interviewed all the people who uh, mm. had, uh, had drunk the water, who had irreversible yes. pathology, and they confirmed it's re really true. And since then, they've been looking at liver pathologies, um, and they've been looking at, at melanoma. So they just take the water, put it on a piece of cotton, rub it, and, and it apparently works. So it's not just these people, but I, I know someone in Seattle who's uh, on, on the board of yet another uh, company, and, and he tells me, you know, he said, it's amazing. Uh, this is a very 
truthful and honest guy. He said, mm -hmm. it seems that this water can reverse pathologies. And I know this fellow for many years, so, so I, I, I have a confidence in, right. in what he said. So there, and, and at the conference we're, we're now attending, I, I've met so many people who have presented various kinds of waters that they claim do similar things. So I, I'm convinced that there's something there. There's something, needs... something in the water that allows us to heal ourselves in a way. Right. So right. It's pretty amazing. It, it, it may involve hydration. You know, your question was, mm -hmm. which waters can hydrate better than others? It might be. So, so you know, essentially, you want to you want to rehydrate. You want the cells to contain more easy water. So, if you drink easy water, <laughs> that may be the key. It's a sort of simple hypothesis that you drink the stuff and and you have more of the mm -hmm. stuff, and it, it hydrates better than other kinds of waters. But that's that's hypothesis. It needs to yes. be tested. Right, so we need to get a consortium of people and companies together. Totally, that would actually do it. Maybe and we should do an Indiegogo, you know? Uh, well, we tried. we tried Indiegogo and um, we, we spent so much time and effort and so much red tape involved, we got approximately $10,000 and we put in more than $10,000. So maybe we need to do a call to all angel investors and all venture capital investors to if come you and would participate. like to help this, how would they, would they contact you? Would they contact... Well, yeah, they can contact me at the University of Washington. I'm easy, easy to find. Um, you know, however, there's no promise. Uh, what are they investing in? You see, uh, they're, they're investing in scientific studies. Right, they're investing in the future of the world's health. Totally. Uh, and their children. There's no guarantee. And their children's health. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that, that's the selling point. However, VCs are often interested in short-term profits. Uh, I don't see much in the way of short-term profits. That's why I, I can see a, a group of representatives of these companies realizing that if the public is aware that there's real evidence that these waters have, have important impact, it's going to benefit those companies. Okay, how about calling all insurance companies, water companies, electrical companies because the healthier people are, the longer they'll live and be able to pay their bills and work. <laughs> so you will, on the long run, actually make more money. I, I think so. I, actually, the idea of the insurance companies actually crossed our, our mind because they, they stand to benefit if people yes, absolutely. Are, are healthy. And this has been totally overlooked. And I think that it, it, we're asking, you know, for a really small amount of money compared to what they're accustomed to dealing with. Five million dollars will will actually cover it. We, we need that over a period of a few years to do the studies. They need to be comprehensive studies. They need to be done double blind. And if we can find out which of those waters are the most beneficial, either generally beneficial or beneficial for, for certain pathologies, imagine what we can achieve. It would be incredible. Yeah, the, the pharmaceuticals are simply not doing it. You know, many, Absolutely. Many of them. <laughs> it would put them out of business. <laughs> well, it's not our goal to put them out of business, no. but, but, but you know, some of the pharmaceutical companies might turn their attention to water. <laughs> as, as Now, wouldn't that be something incredibly powerful and wouldn't wonderful? That? Yeah. That, you know, water as medicine. Water as medicine. Totally. Water as medicine. Cool. You know, it's been used, <laughs> it's been used for millennia. Uh, people knew that certain healing waters could actually heal, but with, with, with the advent of uh, modern science, uh, you know, people have turned away from that. You know, even medical students now are learning that medicine is pharmacology, it's really drugs. You know, you have Tracy, problem. when you went to medical school, did you learn that Medicine we, drugs? everyone in the first year you're in medical school takes history of medicine, and I remember it very clearly, being yeah. told all the history and that, you know, you used to be able to use waters and dirt and, and all sorts of properties for healing. And looking at Paracelsus and the seven causes of disease and the seven cures, yeah. and everyone laughing, and then they said, oh, yeah. were they crazy, and now let's move on to what we have today. But what we're actually finding out today is more and more people are becoming dissatisfied with some of the side effects. Now, you know, let's talk about what would side effects be of water. You know, how wonderful is that? Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not many side effects <laughs> of drinking water. It's yeah. time to go back to ancient medicine and what 
I uh, think yeah. people knew. Yeah, the, 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 the more I, of course, I grew up in an environment of sort of modern medicine. And I mm -hmm. remember taking the physiology course with the medical students at the University <laughs> of Pennsylvania. And, you know, uh, uh, it was taught by many of the leading researchers in, in mm -hmm. physiology. And they were pretty sure they were onto something. However, the, the idea of returning to ancient uh, Chinese and Ayurvedic medicines, uh, w which are so powerful, and as you say, people are beginning to rediscover them. Uh, them. Our, our society is so fraught with chronic disease and it just keeps increasing and, and the uh, pharmacology doesn't really seem to, to be able to do very much for it. But the ancient traditions seem to be much more powerful. So I'm with you on that. Well, thank you so much for sure. spending time with us. Happy. It's been a pleasure. And well, thank you very much. We know <laughs> that your research can really help people shift their lives. Thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this guy's a Chinese.